So welcome back to our dump trailer rebuild project. The first part we got was our controller for our dump body. So let's hook it up and see if we bought a dump trailer or just a big box on wheels. So apparently Texas Pride is really proud of their dump controls because they wanted 130 bucks for this. So I found one online for $25. The only difference is this one uses barrel terminals and our Texas Pride uses spade terminals. So we're just gonna have to switch them over. I don't know, maybe the Texas Pride one is lined with gold, but for my purposes, $20 one will do just fine. All right, let's go throw it on our trailer and see if it works. Or if I have to spend 130 bucks. So given what our control thieves left us, we got a ground, a power, and two triggers. So the red is gonna be the power, the black is gonna be the ground, and I have the 50-50 chance of guessing which one goes where. So if I get it backwards, the buttons will just be backwards. Or I can switch it around and everything will be fine. That's my theory anyway, let's see how it works. All right, so now we can go yellow or yellow. Let's go with blue for the back. Makes sense. At least in my mind. Yellow for the front. Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. We got our friend here just in case we didn't get something right. I say it works. I think we have a small leak here. Climb under there and check it out. There's our leak there. Ooh, that's a big one. That's what she said. Looks like it might be an easy repair though. We don't want these wires getting tugged on. So we're gonna put a clip on here. I don't know why they didn't have one. Just screw it right down to the solenoid. So 
So now when you're tugging on the wiring, it's not pulling these. It's holding right here at all. Keep it from messing up these terminals. And if we want to disconnect the control, we can just unplug it here. And then just leave this part in. Take our control with us. Now we're going to top off our fluid since we had that leak, had a lot of air in the system. Now we're going to bleed the system, which consists of just raising and lowering it. Once we get all the air out, it should make a lot less noise at the end there, where it was chattering before. That was just air in the system. So now so we can hang on to our controller, we're going to change the lock in our toolbox. So it doesn't hurt to try. That's the key for my other trailer. It just happens to be the same as our little present here. So it saves me a couple bucks. When you're poor like me, a couple bucks matters. Throw it in our other trailer. So we'll put our freebie lock in there. Make sure it works. And put the nut on there and tighten it in. And because we had an extra nut, we're going to double nut it. Keeps it from loosening up over time. And the pile. The latch doesn't totally work. You could jiggle it a little bit and get it past the lock. So in order to fix it, just bend the tab out a little bit so the lock fits tighter. So you can't jiggle it past. Oh, the top's kind of loose. Not going to hurt anything, but it really annoys me. It's such a simple repair, we'll fix it. So you just loosen up the striker and move it back, or up, depending on how you look at it. Tighten it back up. Now it fits nice and tight. Now onto the back of the trailer. Take care of that pesky door that doesn't work. We have our patented Texas Pride door alignment tool. Just pry it up a little bit. Check and make sure our doors are lined up and we close. That was an easy fix. Now we're going to straighten out the locking bar. Looks like somebody either backed the trailer into something or maybe pushed it with a bobcat. At any rate, it's bent. So we're going to straighten it out a little bit. 
Just put our porta power spreader in there. Push it out a little bit. A little stress relieving. Make sure it stays. And release it. All good. Now onto the front. Apparently they had a very short truck and they tried to shorten up the safety chains, but unfortunately they won't reach to my truck. So you just pull the cutter pin out, that takes the big pin out, and you can put it back in any link you want. Looks like our next project's right in front of us. So that was a cobalt that rear ended a pickup truck. Smashed the front end up pretty good. Probably broke the intake, like a lot of them do. So when they went to start it, it backfired and the front of it caught fire. They were able to put it out, so it wasn't too interesting. Back to work. Now we're just gonna extend the safety chain on our passenger side. Now that our chains are long enough, we can actually put them where they belong. Our breakaway cable is broken, so we're just going to replace the cable. The system works, so we just need to be able to attach it to our truck. Crimp the end over. We're all good. Check make sure it works. You don't want to find out the hard way it doesn't. Since I broke the other battery hold down, we're going to put a new one on. Ooh, sparks. Doing a little arc welding. So there's just some angle bracket that we painted up. Rather than going out and buying one, I had some extra angle bracket, the holes lined up. I just cut it the length, painted it, and now I'm going to bolt it on. Should hold the battery down, which is its purpose. Now we can grind off the old bracket on the back of the trailer. Just grind out the welds. We don't have to worry about cutting into the old bracket, but we don't want to cut into the trailer frame. We'll just cut a little bit at a time. And we bring out our favorite tool. No job is complete without it. Hit it a couple times, break the welds, grind some more, break some more welds, grind some more, Grind some more. Give up and hammer on it. I'll pound a chisel in there to separate the welds a little more. And we'll grind a little more. I win. In the pile. Now we're just going to clean up the rest of the welds, make them all nice and flat so it's ready for our new piece. So it's basically down just a bare frame at this point. Like that whole bracket never happened. Now because we're welding a lot thicker metal than we normally weld, we have to change the wire in our welder to a thicker gauge from 0.0. 2.3 to 0.035. So like most welders, you change the wire itself, change the tip, and you're ready to go. Now we gotta put our bigger tip on here.
Yes, it's a snap-on MIG welder. All my welds are worth twice as much as everybody else's. I guess that makes up for the Harbor Freight cordless tools you guys harass me about. So now when our parts get here, we're ready to go. So that's about as far as we can go this week. Hopefully next week we'll have all the parts. We can finish this job up. So like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see the rest of this build once we get all of our parts. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. So here's a better look at our cobalt. One second. Not there. Not there. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Nope. Found it. So there it is. This was a rebuilt vehicle. Somebody out there giving us a bad name. So at least the airbag still worked. But this is one of those rebuilds that give rebuilders a bad name. The core support has been replaced once before. We have some less than high quality welds. We got a bracket they never bothered to paint. A reinforcement that they, I don't know if it was aftermarket or what, but pretty rusty. They're not usually that rusty, even on a Chevy. Got some more low quality welding there. Got a nice seam with what looks like some structural body filler. Same thing on this side. 